What's up, friends of the good mood? This is Manny, and have you ever seen a full Ao Ming death squad in formation? And if not, then this is the video for you guys. So let's just sit down, lean back, and enjoy a few videos with a com gameplay compilation with the Ao Ming sniper titan with gendarme and uh, Kurasir, and, uh, and then many others in my team having the exact same setup, okay? So this is gonna be a little bit of a longer compilation, 16 minutes or so. And I think we're gonna have a lot of fun here. So you see already fium, 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 the laser beams from the other Aomings. Then you see my laser beams. Over there is another Aoming. And there will be even more spawning in. I'm not even joking. There will be more Aoming spawning in. It's out of control. Alright, so guys, if you like this very strange video with a bit of a different topic, then subscribe to the channel if you haven't done it yet. Let's wait for it. Wait for it. Bye! Yeah, I love killing hawks when I'm in the sniper titan here, guys. Because they like to take you out, and then you twist it around, and you're like the one doing the killing. That's the best thing. So we just lost a robot over in the distance. We have an enemy, a friendly Ao Ming above us, and I'm below. And I'm like, hey, man, how did you get this far up? What? Why am I so small? All right, and then I decided to, okay, all right, you know what? Let me just grow a little bit, too. I want to be as big and as high as the other guy is above me. So let's first try and finish off uh, some of the enemies here, doing a lot of damage to that starting hawk. Enemy, oh, oh hold on, before I get higher, uh, b before I get high, uh, let's go and uh, finish off the hawk, and then maybe we can also finish off this Arthur. He's attacking our beacon from the Hells, uh, the Hells clan is attacking our beacon here. Let me just uh, try and help out against that. There's only so much he can do. He's being attacked by so many enemies, and uh, he can only shield himself from one direction. Dealing tremendous damage to this enemy hawk, uh, to this enemy Aoming. And then I realize, wait a minute, I can hit him, can I? Yep, I can. Look, he, he shoots over the cover, but I can actually shoot him there. So this is the moment I see two Aomings, and they're both above me, and I'm like, nah. Let's, oh, that's, that's true that. I want to be high and big as well. So let's wait for it. Okay, next flight activated from a higher altitude and here we go okay we have actually four Aomings in the air four sniper titan Aomings are in the air at this very moment we have stand 72 right above uh, right below us i'm the one on the high up position now that's awesome let's fly over the arthur and bypass his shield by shooting on top of him and uh, by doing so his shield is ineffective and we can kill him immediately and, uh, and see this? This is just so crazy, man. A full Aoming death squad. Three three of us. We're literally, like, we could fly above each other. If we have different altitudes, then one could be here, the other one here, the other one here. Imagine how insane this is. I can be right between them because I'm higher. So much firepower. And you see over in the distance here, there's the other Aoming with the sniper weapons. The fourth one that we have. Like, no matter where the enemy team is going now, they get destroyed from all sides with the lasers. And uh, unfortunately, we're losing one of our Mings now. Um, because, uh, yo, this guy has a really good position behind this obstacle right there. Uh, but I made sure to fly around it, and now I can uh, finish this robot and then finish uh, this Titan while he's reloading. There we go. Nice. So uh, the Ao Ming's sniper death squad formation has done its thing. Did he just kill a weapon with the Nightingale shot? Did that really just happen? Let's take a look at this. I have all four weapons, 122,000 HP. I get hit by the Nightingale suppression charge and there goes one weapon. What? Son of a gun. I can't believe he just did that to me. I can't believe it. So, I'm, I'm gonna land and activate my healing, and this is why this uh, guy is unable to actually finish me off. But I lost another weapon. This time, it's the heavy one. I can't believe I lost a small weapon first. Normally, I always lose the heavy weapon first on the Ao Ming. It's probably because it was only a suppression charge from the Nightingale. Otherwise, that would have been a heavy weapon. Well, for sure. Um, so, the first match is over. Let's see how much damage we have done. 5 million damage, 12 kills and zero beacons caps because I was actually recording sniper setups. Let me show you something, a valuable lesson for those who like to play the Ao Ming but may not be experts yet. You know that the Arthur usually takes you down. The Arthur is your counter, but only is the, if the Arthur is further away. Even if the Arthur has the better weapons, right now he's got Cyclone and Cataclysm. 
he would deal way more damage than I do. I would never be able to stand a chance against him and he has more health. But he has a lock on and you can abuse his lock on by flying up and flying over him, right? Now he's hitting me, but now he's gonna lose his lock on time. From up here also, I bypass his shield because I'm shooting over the shield, which is the next advantage. And now he lost his lock on time. Now I make sure to turn around to fly from the other side where he has nothing to lock on to. And then he's now he has to retarget before he can fire. And he's not gonna make it before I got him killed. And if he had more HP, I would simply fly over him again. I would shoot a couple of times and then I would fly above him again. He loses his lock on again and he can't even fire one second. This is how you can kill as an Ao Chun, uh, sorry, as an Ao Ming, you can kill a full Arthur even with the highest damage output weapons uh, by doing it this way. The only way you can't beat people is if they have shotguns. Shotguns you don't win. Even if you try to use this tactic, he will simply tap you down in two shots when you get back in, in firing range. But what you can still do, if he has shotguns, is stay alive. You just make sure to stay above him all the time. He can never look up and shoot you, so he's never gonna be able to kill you with the shotguns. So either somebody else is gonna kill you, or someone else is gonna kill that titan below, so you can get back into the match, right? So again here, I'm just standing above him. I got myself hit a lot by, by his weapons, because I knew I could take it, right? But if I was afraid of the damage he was gonna do, I could have just flown a little bit further until I'm right above his head and then he loses the target lock and he can't fire at me anymore. That's how we uh, how we do it, not just in the Manny town, but also in the Ao Ming town in general. Everybody playing Ao Ming, who's relatively practiced at it, is gonna know that trick, I would assume, right? To make sure not to get flattened by enemy Arthurs too much. So let's finish this guy as he lands. And I think I can hit that Arthur there in the left corner. Oh, first, let's go if, go for that um, that Scorpion. Took a little bit of damage into him. Let's finish the Arthur. Yep, there we go. His name is Tsar. He's from the UA clan and his name is Tsar. I wonder what weapon he would use on an Ao Ming. Maybe Tsar, huh? Maybe, maybe not. Maybe it's just confusing the heck out of me right now. So let's fly all the way over here. It's the same map. We Again, we have multiple Ao Mings with lasers in the air. I think three. I think right now we have three Ao Mings in the air, but this time we're not fly flying in a death squad formation. But this time we're only flying one uh, everybody for himself. Yeah, see? There's, there's the Ao Ming with lasers. There's the Ao Ming. They're both in formation, basically. And I'm doing my thing here on the other side of the map and uh, eliminating this guy who again has that sweet spot behind this uh, tower thingy. That's a very good position for uh, for Ao Ming play. Especially when you have the machine guns and someone like an Ao Ming comes in your range. You can obliterate them so fast. This guy, first transcendence, second transcendence, okay? Third transcendence, phase shift, fifth transcendence. Then last stand and sixth transcendence. Phase shift, last stand, and six times transcendence. 20 seconds of my time, of my life that I never get back. <laughs> Thank you, Warobots. So, yeah, we have done a lot of damage here. How much is it gonna be this time? 5.3 million damage. And uh, those two guys from the UA clan. They did not really have much of a chance here, but they have been seen in the other map too. This, by the way, is also a very popular thing. Um, to use the Ao Ming to fly over the ocean on the carrier map and shoot from an angle into the map where people usually are behind cover and in safety, that Ao Ming is now able to take them down and basically uh, uh, bypass their cover. The best position would be here behind this building and behind the uh, superstructure on this ship uh, and then basically just shooting in from behind them. That is the ideal way to use this, but uh, I didn't get this far. I never actually made it this far uh, now that I think about it. We have an enemy uh, Hades there, trying to deal some damage to him there. Uh, but he's gonna get behind cover. I only was able to drop him a little bit. There is a hawk. He wanted to kill me, but I was ready for it. I knew he was gonna try and fly up, so I was just having him aimed. And as soon as he tried to fly up to laser me down, I finished him real quick. Because now that the hawk nerf is there, the resistance of the hawk only begins after he reaches the high altitude, similar to the Aochon, right? 
Now, this El Ming right there doesn't really stand much of a chance, even though he has the healing going right now. Uh, but the uh, laser weapons from Gendarme and Kurasir actually do more damage at max range than the, um, than the, uh, uh, what's it, Cyclone and Cataclysm do. Uh, but if you get close to the enemy, Cyclone and Cataclysm is gonna whoop the living heck out of you. Uh, they do way more damage then. Finishing the Titan, finishing the uh, Hawk, and, uh, yeah, so this is quite a carry with the uh, Laser Ming. See, there's another Laser Ming out in the distance to the right, and we're having, like, a different impact angle on the battlefield, like, uh, firing angle, they cannot hide. Either they get killed by him or they get killed by me, but there's no way to be safe from both of us. And that's why uh, we're able to really take down the Titans really effectively here. See this Ming over in the distance? Bam, 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 bam. He thought he was safe. Now he gets behind the cover and the other El Ming is gonna probably get him hit again, right? Uh, I'm focusing on the uh, Fenrir there for a sec. He's got flamethrowers, but it's very difficult to pre-aim and lead the target very well with the flamethrowers. So, uh, German Anarchy, I'm sorry, my friend, but, uh, those flamethrowers are not gonna kill me. Bam! Bam! See how hard it is for him to hit us here. Oh, enemy Ao Ming is coming in. Let's recharge a few more shots and then go forward and take him down. Bam! 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 If I had fight fought him immediately, maybe I would have lost the battle, but I went back, recharged some weapons, then his friend here suppressed me with the Nodens and so I save up more ammo, start repairing and then kill him after my suppression ends and I didn't waste any firepower while I was being suppressed, that would not have made any sense, right? So pretty hard carry with the Ao Ming, let's see how much damage it was this time. Vitali! We did 5.5 million damage or 5.4, uh, not a bad match, seriously, pretty good. Now, on one of my favorite maps, Valley, um, Valley, a power plant, those of you know me and watch my content on a regular basis, you know that Valley is and power plants are my favorite maps. They both offer a lot of nice short-range combat, they have a bit of long-range combat, but uh, you always have, can find cover to shield yourself from certain things, and you can approach people in short range, you can play with skills and knowledge of the map and just, you know, get behind cover at the right time, make some nice landings with flying robots and stuff like this. I really like the map. Um, I'm not a fan of the sniper maps like Springfield, uh, but when doing sniping setups, obviously, then these maps are very good. And uh, Yamantau is not in the game yet. I think probably Pixonic's gonna bring it back. I'm not a fan of Yamantau at all. I don't like it at all. Unless they do what they, uh, what they, anna um, not announced, but when I was at Pixonic headquarters, I suggested uh, a change to Yamantau where the map is like a long one and the spawns are on the long sides. And I suggested to, spawn to change the spawns to make them on the, um, like on the long sides, instead of the short sides, basically, on the, uh, with a very long distance between the spawns, making them on the shorter, uh, on the long side, so the distance is shorter uh, between the spawns. Therefore, there would be very interesting combat scenarios all over the place on the beacons, and it's no longer just one center beacon that defines the entire map. It would be the center beacon and the outer beacons that are that used to be base beacons that are now the outer beacons. It would be an incre incredibly fun, um, fun way of playing Yamantau. And they said they were gonna try it, but they never did, unfortunately. Not yet, anyways. Maybe maybe they're working on it. I, I mean, I'd love to see uh, them try Yamantau this way. Maybe on the test server first. Let people say what they think about it uh, and get people's uh, opinion on the map, right? And if people will be like, nah, that's not good, uh, then we'll uh, scrap it. Scrap the idea. It was just an idea, right? But if people will be like, whoa, yeah, this is awesome. Yamantau can now be a brawling map can be a sniping map, now you can have fun with every setup on Yamantel, and it's no more just everything revolving around the center beacon, and people enjoy that too, then uh, then my idea would work. Here, again, I would have absolutely lost this battle against this guy. He's got Cyclone, he's got, uh, or, um, he's got Tsar, so he's got more firepower than I do with my lasers, so I go close to him, and then I fly over him, he loses lock on, and he can no longer deal damage to me, and I'm safe. And then I can f choose to fire on him from above or not if I don't want to, right? If I want to just stay above him. All right, I do have a picture somewhere with the Yamantau thing. I don't think I'll be f able to find this uh, real quick, right? Let's see, but I think I probably don't have this here. 
Nah. Uh, I thought I might be able to find this real quick to explain how I meant this, but didn't couldn't find it. Bam! Again, another hawk that decided to take me down, and uh, and I decided to uh, you know not have this. Here, another tip for those of you who like to play Ao Chuns. Uh, sorry, Ao Mings. Why do I keep doing this? Um, when you have similar setups like a sniper Mings firing at each other. The one who lets the other come to him has the advantage. Look, I fly backwards at, at 610 meters. He cannot hit me, but my weapons can hit him. See that? I hit him and his weapons didn't make it in time. Because I flew backwards and my shots travel like a second or so. And within that second he flew a little bit closer and then therefore the weapons actually made it have 600 meters and hit him and connected. While his weapons had to travel the 620 plus the distance I need, uh, it took them to travel this far, meters to reach me. So they could not reach me anymore. And uh, so again, the one who lets the other Ming come to him is the one with the advantage, right? You can do free damage and you probably don't even take any from the enemy. Um, all right, so FR guys, how many times did I see them? I think I've seen them in the previous match and in the match before. FR, you guys are everywhere. Greetings to you at this point, since I do seem to see you all the time. Whatever this was, it's gone now. We have another Hawk, and he's doing the thing that I love to do. He's having a jump unit on the flight. So he jumps first and then activates flight and gets incredibly high up. The disadvantage is you only activate resistance when you reach the highest altitude point, and you deactivate your resistance already as you start to descend. So now you are very vulnerable for a much longer duration as you fall down, right? And that's something you have to keep in mind. We killed him down to last stand and finished him last stand. All of that within his landing because this is how long it took him to finally land back on the ground, right? So if you use this tactic of jump unit and flight, you have to make sure that when the flight ends, you're already behind a tower like this here to my left so that you're already in safety or that at least your landing lands you perfectly behind cover of something, right? So that you are not as vulnerable for as long. Uh, but many people you know, sometimes screw up their landings and when they do this, well, they're very easy targets now that the nerf of the hawk is through. I'm, I'm, wow, I'm really in trouble, dude. I'm getting hit by so many things right here. That machine gun Ming is so dangerous. Uh, but I'm, I'm, I'm very, very determined to take him down, and I was able to do it with 788 health at the end. The Mino, the, the Nodens down there could literally kill me now with a suppression charge. The Nodens has a suppression charge that does around 1,500 or something damage. He could kill me with that. That was, would be a really funny death, but thankfully he didn't think about it, and I get back to my healing. So I started to heal back up. Healing is still going, still going, bam! We healed more than 110 or 120,000 HP. And uh, therefore, I'm, I'm able to have a little bit more health. So, Koringa, let's go and unleash some damage. He always switches over to me immediately, I realize that, so... I always just get back in cover as soon as he tries that. Now he suppressed me, okay. Okay, I have everybody on me right now, so let's come to this side. There's only this guy, and he's probably gonna start reloading soon. Actually, maybe he already did, I don't know. So this guy down there, he wants me. He's firing at me for a while. I've seen you. I've seen you do this for a while. Time to end you. And then we have a Typhon robot in the distance. Uh, he face shifts. Okay, the other guy. Where is he? Nah. Okay, that's something else. There's another Typhon too. I didn't take him into aim. But I'm doing a lot of damage to the tier robot. And that's it. The video is at an end. So that was the video where I wanted to show you some formation death squad uh, gameplay with the Ming. Of course, it was only a short situation uh, because I do not play as a clan player um, or with other people in platoons when I play the Battle Rec account. I'm th I think that's not even allowed. I'm not even sure. I think it might be forbidden or not allowed. I don't know, but I, you know, I never really do it anyway. So, um, but uh, in this case, a random situation occurred, and we had some great combat and some great formation there going, at least for a little bit. So yeah, thanks for watching, guys. Have a good one. Manny signing off. Bye bye.